Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Karen McGee here from my living room um, on a Saturday morning. We thank you for joining us. Um, and we have some other guests joining us as well. Um, today is Navigating Your New House Degree, and we have the advising staff with us. And we are going to walk you through the New House Bachelor's Degree from start to finish and certainly leave time for questions. Um, I just want to acknowledge, I don't know if several of you did join the Dean yesterday, um, but we did have a sad week here. Um, and I just want to say that our advising staff is really in tune with our students. Um, I think students right now are feeling a little um, worn out. Uh, we just hit midterms. There's been a lot of work due. We had a rough week with the students passing and we've got five weeks to go. So we're just kind of in the home stretch and trying to help our students stay positive and keep their eye at the end. So just when we can acknowledge that and um, talk about that if you have questions at the end. But I would like to enjoy or introduce our, um, I enjoy introducing our advising staff. I think Brian's gonna try to do a Brady Bunch for us. Um, and I'm gonna start right up at the top and go in order that I see. And we've got a advising staff of six advisors. We actually have five with us. Our sixth, Aaron, is starting on Monday. So five of them are with us. Allison Fredericks has been with us about five years and she handles our students who are A through D. And actually you're probably gonna have to help me because you know me, I always goof up the alphabet. Um, Brad Stalter is also with us. Um, Brad comes to us with a background in res life. So he has some higher ed experience outside of advising and he has L through R. Correct? L I through R O. Okay, so if your son or daughter has a last name with that, they will be with Brad. Also joining us is Kristen Cutler. Kristen has the end of the alphabet. She has the R E R O's or R U's through Z's. And then also joining us is Tess Barrett. There she is up there in the corner. And Tess joined us this summer. So she's just getting on board. It doesn't have her first group of students yet, but will be soon. Um, Rich Mendez is with us as well. Rich, waving. He has that second part of the alphabet. And so if your sons or daughters are E through L, um, I, right? Last names, that is Rich. And then also joining us is Suzanne McGuire. Suzanne is our director of advising. So she's kind of our problem solver, um, Paper, paper approver, process person. So she'll also be here to answer some questions. I do have a PowerPoint I'm gonna share and walk through. Um, wanna cover some bits and pieces um, and I know we will have questions for sure. So I'm gonna share my screen and start my little PowerPoint here. Okay. Um, the Undergraduate Advising Office, as I mentioned, we have six academic advisors, the sixth starting Aaron Knighton on Monday. Um, one thing that we do is I mentioned we assign by last name and the same academic advisor will track each student through their four years, which I think is nice because they get to know the students and work with them really from the start. Um, many of you might recognize Kristen, Allison, Rich's, Brad's names because they were working with your kids um, from May on, they were the, student, the people that helped with AP credit, transfer credit, um, answered questions about registration when we registered students this summer. And we're also getting ready to um, get ready for registration, which is going to occur in December. And our office will be helping students register for the spring, because from here on in, your sons and daughters are going to be registering themselves. So that is our staff, and that's, we stay with them all four years. Your sons and daughters also have additional advisors on campus and the peer advisor really kicks in that first semester. So we're kind of winding that down a little bit. They still are in touch. Um, they worked with them this summer. It's an upper class student there to help acclimate students, talk to them about classes. Um, your sons and daughters are in a COM 100 right now and you can see under the faculty advisor, um, COM 100 is our freshman seminar. And the freshman seminar takes place first semester. It meets about seven to 10 times and they do have a faculty or an instructor leading that who serves as their faculty advisor. Each has a peer advisor helping them. So your sons and daughters are meeting 
weekly. We're kind of in a little bit of a hiatus right now until we get ready for registration. Um, but we are the, um, that is the class where we're acclimating them to a new house, to how to talk to professors. Um, we just got through mid-semesters, mid-semester progress reports are being collected through Sunday. So their faculty advisors there to help them um, translate what those mean and negotiate maybe if they need to speak with a professor or two. So peer advisor and faculty advisor are working with them right now. The faculty advisor in COM 100, that's that one right now, they will stay with them throughout this year because the first year advising major wise is pretty generic. Um, all students take the first or the two same courses, COM 107 and COM 117 their first year. And it's not until the second semester or sophomore year where they really start getting deeper into majors. Um, when students do decide on a major, our office and their current faculty advisor, their COM 100 instructor, will help them select a faculty advisor in their major because we want them by the time they get to be a junior to be working with someone in their major. So what do, does the faculty advisor do versus our advisors? Our advisors, we are the everything people. We're the ones that make sure that students are meeting requirements, getting paperwork done. If there are processes such as withdrawing from a class or transferring credit in, that would be our office, the academic advisors. The faculty advisor role is really to help on major. All of our majors have a real sequence of courses to follow. In, a, in an ordered structure. So the faculty advisors know their majors. They can help the students with that. All of our majors also have choices. Students can take electives. They can choose different tracks in our majors. And that is where the faculty members or faculty advisors expertise really comes into play. So it's kind of a nice balance. We have our office who's doing the generic um, everything advising, making sure they're meeting requirements. And then we have that complemented with the faculty advisor who's advising on major specific types of questions and coursework. If your sons and daughters are in honors, they also have an additional honors advisor who will help them select honors classes and make sure they're following and meeting honors requirements. And if sons and daughters are in another college, if they are a dual major or thinking of adding another major, they will also have an advisor and in some cases an additional faculty advisor in those. So it is possible in some situations for students to have five advisors and it can kind of get a little confusing I think for some students, but we always tell them your new house advisor, our academic advisors, Brad, Suzanne, Rich, Tess, Allison, Kristen, Aaron are always a good place to start. If we don't know the answer or if we are not the people that handle that situation, we will make sure they get to the people that do. So the Newhouse degree, and I apologize, I know we may have some upper class parents here um, who've seen this and been through this, um, but we're gonna start right at the beginning. Um, the Newhouse degree, if you're singly enrolled is 122 credits. So if the students are taking about 15 credits a semester, they're gonna finish in four years. In fact, our graduation rate is 88% in four years. It's the highest on campus. Newhouse courses are about 42 of those credits for this incoming class, 38 for others, the years ahead. Arts and science is a big part of our degree. Um, the Newhouse School feels that if there's nothing going on up here, there's nothing to communicate about. So students will take 61 to 65 credits of arts and science, and that includes 17 required courses. And they have choice, and we'll look at our core in the next slide. We also require our students to have a minor, which is usually six classes, 18 credits, or a second major. The vast majority of our students out of 2,000 about 650 are dual majors. The remainder, almost 1,400, are singly enrolled with a minor. So there's no pressure to do a second major. I said it's slightly under a third of our student body has a second major. The only thing students must do is one major at Newhouse, a minor outside of Newhouse, and their arts and science. So let's take a look at the core. And this is a little bit small. Um, but what we have here is a slide 
from a tool that students can use. It's, they can find it on my slice. And what it does, this is called Degree Works. It takes, it populates either their AP credit, their schedule, what they're taking, and it actually puts their courses into their requirements. It's basically a degree audit online. So this is an example, and I just wanna show you our core. I mentioned the 17 classes, and this is someone who is kind of at the halfway point. Um, we have a basic language or writing skills requirement, and many students bring AP in. Um, this student took it with Writing 105. We require two foreign languages, and they can be different languages. This student took two Spanish, but we offer 17 languages at SU. You could take Arabic 101 and Spanish 201 and fulfill our language requirement. Our quantitative skills, one statistics course. This student filled it with AP. Um, an additional skill could be another math, accounting, a public speaking. We have a list for students to choose from. And then something called writing intensive. These are arts and science courses where we know that the assignments are going to be writing based, that tests are not multiple choice, that the tests are writing based. It really is an effort on part of the university to get students to write more. So those are our seven skills. And then the remaining 10 are what we call divisionals and they represent areas of arts and science. So we have social sciences, students have to take two. That could be American history or economics or psychology or political science or um, women and gender studies. They need to take two natural sciences, one with a lab. The student took earth science and then took a business calculus class. Finally, two humanities. English, philosophy, religion, linguistics, literature, English, and then four additional for a total of 10. Um, most of these courses are lower level, and this is what students do their first two, two and a half years. They have all four years to complete the 17 credits of core, which gets them to about 50 or 52 of those arts and science classes that they need. So a lot of times students look at our 61, 65 arts and science credits and say, oh, there's so many classes, um, but our core is gonna really ensure that students get there. If they had a P or transfer credit, as we can see on this person right here, chances are it went right into the core so they have things filled out. So your sons and daughters have this available to them right now. And actually, Suzanne, I'm gonna ask you a question because you're a degree works expert. Is this something that students can share? Because um, I know students can share their MySlice with you. Um, I'm just going to ask Suzanne if she knows if this is something that can be shared on MySlice with another user. Yes, uh, parents can have access to DegreeWorks if the students give them their um, login information. Thanks, Suzanne. That's what I thought. The nice thing about DegreeWorks is during registration, um, what will happen, this is not a live shot, but if you're in the live MySlice, if you, this student, for instance, needs social science or they're taking them, they need additional courses, you can click on this, whoops, you can click on that there and it'll bring up to the list. It'll, it'll show the student what choices they have to pick from there. So it's actually very user-friendly and certainly helps with registration. It's our first starting point when we start to discuss planning for next semester. So this is our core, our 17 arts and science core courses, which get the most of the way there. So let's talk a little bit about second majors. Newhouse does have three colleges that we have teamed with and have arranged that a major can work with these three other colleges and be done in four years. Um, and the reason is, is we have overlap with arts and science requirements. So what students do is they roll those 18 credits that they would be using for a minor into the other major in these areas. Um, some students have come in as a dual. I mentioned about 650 of our 2000 students are duals. The vast majority are with the College of Arts and Sciences. That's a really easy dual to do. Um, it really isn't any additional credits, maybe an extra three to six. Um, so easily done. And students will do a major in arts and science and a major in new house and meet our requirement. They don't need a minor. And anything in arts and sciences is available. Um, they have over 40 majors. 
Second is our school of management. Um, that is probably, we were the second largest group of students, um, about 175, 150. This is a little bit heftier program. It's another professional degree like Newhouse. And the Whitman majors range really in the 48 to 52 credit range. So students who add a second major in Whitman um, are often looking at about 155 credits. So that's an additional almost year, but we have found that most of our students don't need an additional year. Between AP credit, they can take 19 credits a semester in summer work. Our students, the vast majority, finish this in a four-year time span. Whitman is the only school that does require students add it at the beginning of sophomore year. That is the only time you can add a second major at Whitman. They do not accept students mid-year. And by start of junior year, it's a little too late to add those extra credits. Um, Arts and Sciences is pretty flexible. Um, they prefer students do it before the end of sophomore year, but we have had instances where students have added the College of Arts and Science as a second major at the beginning of junior year. Our smallest dual is the iSchool. This is the information science for us oldies like me. That's the old library science school. And they're an interesting pairing with Newhouse. Um, really what we like to describe is we are the content providers and they are the content creators or, or they get the information out to people. They create the means to get that information out. So if you have an understanding of the programming and how that works, um, that's an interesting combination. Um, so those are our three duals. And iSchool, like Arts and Science, is a little more flexible. Um, it does have 40 extra, 42, 38 to 42 credits. Um, so it does take some additional credit time, summer work. Um, but like I said, we have probably about 75 of, of our students doing dual with the iSchool. Um, so these are options. Um, and our advisors talk to students about this. I only, I tell students usually, only do a second major if you have true, two true loves, um, because these can be a little limiting. Um, they take the ability to explore away. And I don't mean that in a negative, but what you do is you're fulfilling two majors. So if your children or son or daughter is eclectic, they wanna explore, um, they like trying a lot of different things, um, their best bet probably is to stick with a single major at Newhouse with an arts and science minor. And then they're gonna have some 18 or 19 credits to explore in other areas across the university. Sometimes students come in and are very, very focused and say, I love history. I wanna get into film document, be a film documentarian. Um, I'm gonna be television, radio, film and history. And they come right in and do that. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of choice. Um, and our advisors in our office are there to kind of help them handicap what makes sense, what would be the implications, what would be any added credits, um, and even mapping out how it would be done. I mentioned earlier, the vast majority of our students actually pick a minor instead, one Newhouse major and then a minor outside of Newhouse. And there is a lot out there. And this is where I think it's kind of fun. Um, we will have students do multiple minors, that is possible. Um, and it's possible if you do an arts and science minor and you can pair it with a professional minor. Um, and we start to see some really interesting combinations. Um, we have had students who are magazine, new, um, magazine news and digital majors and with a minor in women and gender studies. Maybe they're interested in writing for women's magazines or they could pick up a nutrition minor in folk and they wanna get into nutrition writing or health writing. We have public relations students who are interested in financial communications, pick up a finance minor at Whitman. Or we even have had our broadcast students pick up a minor in communication and rhetorical studies in BPA, which focuses on ways of communication, um, how humans communicate, public speaking. So there's a lot of combinations. Um, the majority of our minors will accept students until the beginning of junior year. Um, our professional minors, do have an application process. In our office, our academic advisors would be the people to start with. There's also quite a bit of information on the um, university catalog. If you go to the SU website and just type in catalog and you will go to the um, undergraduate and then do academic offerings. There are links to every minor on campus 
and they can tell you exactly how you apply if there are any requirements. There are some requirements in some of them, academic, um, and they'll also give you a list of the classes that make up the minor. Um, very popular ones for Newhouse are over at Falk. They have a sport management and a sport analytics minor. Um, those are competitive. You do need a 325 or higher to get in. Um, Whitman as well does require a 3.0. Um, other minors are a little more eclectic. Um, Col College of Visual Performing Arts has a drama minor, and they say they take the first 15 people who apply. Um, so our office and our advisors can help students explore minors, as can faculty advisors. A lot of times students will want to talk to a faculty advisor. What would be a complementary minor to my major and my interests? But the minor choice is something that's going to be happening beginning of sophomore year. Some students are already starting to explore in the second semester freshman year, but minors do need to be declared by the start of the junior year. And that is something, again, our academic advisors would help them do and also remind them of if they haven't done that. All right, so we've kind of got the, what I'll say, the requirements out of the way. So once a student in their first few years has got the core courses under control, they have started to either add a second major, look at minors and explore minors. When we get to junior year, and this is when you start to get your requirements are getting underway. You've taken a lot of your foundation courses in your major. Um, you can start to really explore. And junior year is often when our students go abroad. And one thing that the advising office can do is help them plan. Um, we have eight campuses across the world. Um, right now, obviously, we're not operating those. Um, I think spring is a little iffy, especially with the coronavirus surge in Europe. Um, but certainly if you have a freshman or sophomore, I, I am confident that in two years we will probably be back up and running fully um, and students will be going abroad for full semesters or summer. What happens abroad? The vast majority of courses are really upper division arts and science. And I, I think that that's really the purpose of going abroad. We don't want students to go to Florence and study American advertising. It's not what they do there. So what we want students to do is to go to Florence or to Beijing or to Santiago or Strasbourg or London um, or Madrid. And we want them to take courses on history of that country, language, art, um, social issues. Um, and that's what students often use that last 10 to 12 credits of arts and science that they need that they don't get with those 17 core courses, they're often doing those abroad. Um, we do offer a couple of courses in London and Madrid, um, but as I said, we want students to go where they are interested in going and not study major. All Newhouse majors can be done in five semesters on campus. So if your student is going to be here eight semesters, they can go abroad and be perfectly fine not taking a Newhouse class. They're not going to be behind. Um, and we're going to look at the next slide as our domestic semesters. They can even go to a domestic semester. They could be away two semesters. And in most cases, be absolutely fine taking nothing. Um, but the domestic semesters are new house focused. So students usually do abroad in the uh, junior year. Again, they can go full semester or their six week summer programs. Generally, students take 12 credits. Um, our European campuses are only in class Monday through Thursday, and they plan trips for Friday, Saturday, Sundays for travel. So a lot of times if students have AP credit, they may want to save and use one of those AP credits to buy themselves a 12 credit, or 12 credit semester abroad. Um, about 60% of our students go abroad in some form, either a full semester, the vast majority, or for a summer. Um, SU has one of the oldest abroad programs in the world. Um, we started actually sending students to China in the 20s. So we are a pretty old program. They've got a pretty, I should say, a very, very strong um, connection around the world and have a good reputation. So something for students to consider. The other option we have for students to continue study off campus are our domestic semesters. And we have full semesters, fall and spring in both Los Angeles and New York City. 
And we actually have a summer program in Los Angeles. We haven't quite gotten there in New York yet. Um, whereas abroad is study of the culture, the country, arts and science focus. These are professional semesters where students will focus heavily on Newhouse. The connecting with both of these is the connection is an internship is required. Um, students will go to these sites. They will live in New York. They live in an Upper East Side high rise. In LA, they live in a poolside apartment complex. Um, and then they will intern four to five days a week and attend three to four classes in the evenings. So it is a mix of work and also classroom learning. The nice thing about these classes is they're taught by professionals who are there. Many of them are alumni and there's supplementary workshops um, in LA. They may go to a movie premiere. They may go to an award show in New York City. They go to, um, they visit different sites. Um, they went and watched a show being taped. They went behind the scenes of an MSNBC news show. So we have programming in to introduce them not only to the city, but to the professionals and the professional opportunities there. So it is perfectly possible with planning, how's that for alliteration, um, for students to do both abroad and a semester in New York or LA. They can't do both New York and LA. They can do one or the other and abroad. And again, that's really where our advisors come into play because you need to plan for these. Um, you can take our law course in New York and LA and there's certain courses you need to save. It's mainly electives. Um, so our advisors are schooled in what's offered and they can help your son or daughter plan out exactly what they're gonna take when, where and get the remainder of their semesters planned out. One last thing I wanna mention before we open to questions is one thing that our office does is back to our audit here. I just wanna show you back to that. Um, we will do an audit for our students. Each of their advisors does an audit once they hit 60 credits. That's the junior, some, um, should say this the junior level. Um, and we will do an audit, which tells them how many they have left to do, how many classes, how many credits. And you can see up at the top of this, it says a minimum of 122 is required. You have 61, the student is right at the halfway point, exactly. Um, but our advisors are sending these to students. They email them and say, this is your degree audit. This is what you have left to do. Please let me know if you have questions. Um, we really recommend that they come in and see our advisors at least once a year. Once a semester is even better, um, but at least once a year. Um, I will tell you the only problems, and Suzanne can back me up on this, the only problems we tend to have are the handful of students who never come and see us. Um, and we reach out to them, you need this, you need this requirement, and they don't respond. Um, so one way you can help us is just make sure your sons and daughters are checking their syr.edu email, um, responding to the advising office if we are in touch, and using our services. Our job is to get students through here meeting requirements and to graduate on time. So um, we're here for them. We would just encourage you to help us help them. So I'm gonna just open it. And if our advisors wanna, un oops, unmute themselves, there's our last slide. Um, and, I, and maybe Suzanne wants to add a little bit to this. Um, even though we are in COVID times and many of you haven't seen our office, our office can handle about three to four advisors at a time. So even we are not all able to be there at the same time just because of um, social distancing and density. Um, likewise, our office setup is that when we advisors meet with students, we're only about two feet away from them. So it was deemed that we can't hold in-person advising. So we have been doing this really since March through Zoom or the phone or through email. But I want to assure you that at any given time, Monday through Friday, there are three to four of us in the advising office. And we have met with students in person who are in immediate need. But there is always somebody there to call or to talk to. They can call. They can um, email us. And we have um, online drop-ins every day from 11 to 2. So any kind of questions, they just go into the waiting room and they get a call from us. 
Suzanne, do you want to add anything to this? I was just going to say um, registration is going to be taking place while your uh, sons and daughters are home this year. And we, we will have, we'll open our uh, drop-in hours pretty much. It'll be all day. So it'll be drop-in from like nine to four every day. Encourage them to come in and ask those questions. Um, we will also be attending the COM 100 classes before they leave campus to show them how to use the MySlice system to register themselves. Um, if they're first year students, we kind of did that for them this summer and this will be the first time that they're doing it on their own. But we go in and we will help them uh, learn how to use MySlice, how to put things in what's called the shopping cart um, and register which will take place in December this year. So they'll be home while they're registering and just know that we will be available um, remotely. Um, so they can drop into our office hours, they can email um, their advisors or they can call our office and someone will be around. Thanks, Suzanne. I am gonna end our show here and we're gonna open up the chat and we're going to answer questions. I think I think the first the first question. Oh, I'm muted. Oh no, I am not. Sorry. <laughs> um, so our first question is about AP credit and how um, that counts towards the degree. Do, do you want me to take that one? Yes. Go ahead. So, um, if your sons or daughters uh, took AP during high school. Um, what they should do is report those scores to their academic advisor. They'll actually go into um, the AP system and ask that the scores be sent to Syracuse University. And then what happens is we get them electronically and then um, we will review them and there's an actual uh, kind of like a uh, if you took the calculus AP exam, that's equivalent to math 121 here at Syracuse University. So they would get the credits for that class. And so then we would show that within um, our degree works and it would all be in the system. So they actually get credit for it. And it's, uh, it's dependent upon the tests that they've taken and the score they receive. So they don't get it automatically. They have to get a specific score on AP. But if they have any questions, they can contact their academic advisor. Um, if they're not seeing their AP credit within degree works, it could be that the scores haven't been sent to us yet, or um, we may not have processed it yet. So have them just reach out to their academic advisor and we can check to see if the scores have been received by Syracuse. Great, thanks, Suzanne. Um, I see a question about LA. Um, and like I said, we're going to actually post our, our link. Um, the, there is an additional cost. It's a $1,500 program fee for both LA and New York. And what that covers in addition, so it's the same, I should say same tuition and fees. Um, the big difference is in, in um, LA, you do need a car. So if there isn't a car available, we, we do have an agreement with um, Enterprise for rental because traditionally you can't rent a car if you're under 25. We do have a, an agreement with them that we can do that or can get that arranged. But I think the additional cost in addition to that 1500 is a uh, program fee is the car. New York on the other hand does not require a car. Um, you can get pretty much anywhere you need to go using public transit. Um, but that is the big difference. Aid um, follows and there are scholarships for both. In fact, I remember a couple years ago having to ask students to apply for the scholarships. They actually had to write an essay um, and sometimes getting them to do that is difficult on top of all their work, um, but there is some scholarship additional for um, LA. So, um, and then here's another question. I know you said one semester in either LA or New York, but can you either do one in LA in either New York? That's correct, yes. So you could go to New York and um, Strasbourg or LA and Madrid, absolutely. Um, that would leave six semesters on campus and all of our majors can be done in five semesters. So you could still even spend one semester not doing a Newhouse class, 
Students don't want to do that though. And again, remember the LA and the New York semesters are almost all um, SU or I should say new house work. So students do their internship, which is major. Um, they might do our law course, which is required of all of our majors. We have several types of law that they have to learn depending on their major. Um, and then they might take two electives. So it could be anywhere from nine to 12 credits of new house work in New York or LA. So absolutely they can do it. Um, someone asked if the internship is paid. Um, there are a couple that are. Um, I have found that the more technical your skills are, the more likely you are to be paid. Um, I don't necessarily mean that in production in LA, nine times out of 10, they will not be paid. Your chances are greater in New York, um, you know, doing some kind of design work, um, writing, often being in a magazine or writing for news. Um, you might be able to get some money, um, but it's really a mixed bag. Um, someone asked about the DC program, and I'm going to be honest, um, that is coordinated by the Maxwell School. Um, so that is not our program, um, but students can go through Maxwell or the College of Arts and Science. Um, it's very much like an abroad program, but they attend American U. They take courses through American University, live on that campus. And I think the advantage really is, is that you are right there in Washington, DC. Um, I believe the internships are available as well. So that would be something to look at there. And I do know that they have, if you go to the um, Arts and Science website, or actually if you go to the um, um, S Syracuse University website and just type in American U or DC program, I've looked that up, you can find information there. Um, uh, aspiring broadcaster, is that only given in New York? No, um, actually here um, at SU, right on campus, we have a lot for um, students who are interested in sports. Um, and that really, you know, we can start at the beginning. Um, sports is a big part of SU. Um, students can and should get involved early. Um, I'll talk a little bit about how they can get some hands on and then we'll talk about the new house part of that. Um, the WAER, our NPR affiliate, the new sports department is run by students. So students can join and by the time they're junior, senior, um, most likely be on air. So we also have JPZ, which has a sports department, Citrus, which has a sports department, and the Orange Television Network, which is our cable TV. So those are all ways that activities that students can get involved in sports. Um, Newhouse itself, um, we work directly with the ACC and all live, or I should say all games that are in the dome or up at the soccer fields actually are produced at the Newhouse School. And students have the opportunity to work behind the scenes alongside professionals. When ESPN comes in to produce a football game, in fact, I think they're there today, um, probably came in at 5 a.m. this morning. Students have to have early hours. And I think they're, I know with the limited, we're limited with space and density, um, but I know there are at least three students working this morning alongside so they can get production experience. As far as classes, um, we offer at least eight electives, everything from color commentary to play-by-play -play to um, e-sports to um, public relations and sports. Um, and uh, it, there's a lot of opportunity. So it doesn't need to go to New York for sports at all. So um, there's a question about uh, if a student interns in New York or LA, does SU have any accommodation or connection? Um, in New York, yes. Um, there is something called Educational Housing Services. It's actually a not-for-profit. They own nine high rises in the greater New York City area. And we always, our Career Development Center works with them um, to connect students and they can do singles, they can do doubles, they can do quads. Um, so that is our situation in New York. In the summer in LA, we do have an LA program. Um, so our accommodations out there, you would need to likely be enrolled in our program, which does involve an internship. So that might be a way to be in LA in the summer um, would be perhaps do our summer internship program. But LA is tough, again, because you need a car. It's not like New York where you can live in the vicinity and get in through public transit. It's very car driven, no pun intended. 
Um, are there opportunities for this in LA or better to focus on in New York? Um, about the sports, um, just according Lynn. So LA, yes, we've had students who are interested in sports go to LA. Um, you know, I think Fox Sports has a big, big headquarters out there in LA. Um, and they may work with an affiliate in sports or maybe work with one of the sports teams out there. Um, the whole purpose of the New York and LA semesters really are for students to get a feel of, of the city. Um, our hope is that people from the West Coast try New York and people from the East Coast and try LA and anyone in the middle can go anywhere. Um, sometimes students are like, oh, I live in New Jersey and I wanna do the New York semester. And we're like, just intern there in the summer and go to LA if you are interested. Um, so yes, if LA is the interest, I would say we can certainly accommodate sports interest out there. Um, there's a question about COVID in internships. Um, actually, we did a whole um, yesterday, and I might put you in touch with Kelly Barnett, our career director. She did a program yesterday at 3.30 on marketing yourself in these times. How do you get through when we're in a pandemic? Um, so she has probably more detailed information, but I, I can tell you what happened this past year with internships. In March and April, companies, employers started canceling internships left and right. Um, and then May rolled around the beginning of June and they started to see that we were kind of able to work this out online and remotely. So they actually started calling students back. So a number of our students had internships that were canceled and called back this summer. Um, and all of us, obviously many of you are probably remotely working. Um, we found ways to make this work even journalists were doing all of their work from home. So um, it's forced everybody to work differently, um, but I wouldn't say that internships have diminished at all. Um, they're just different. Um, we're looking forward to the time when we can get back to a traditional, I think. But um, Angela, I'm gonna put you in touch with um, Kelly Burnett. If somebody could put Kelly's email up there for everybody in the CDC, Susanna someone could type it to attendees. Karen, do you want me to take the next one about the New York and summer yes. else question? Give, you, give yourself a break there. Yes. Um, so students, we don't encourage them to do a New York se semester and a summer in LA only because um, courses are the same. But if a student is interested in doing that, a, a New and an LA semester, I would encourage them to get in touch with their academic advisors because we've had a few students do that that really want to do it, but it takes a lot of planning. Um, so we would it would be a special case. So um, please encourage them to get in touch with with me if you're with your student or um, their academic advisor and we can speak to them directly about that. Great. I'm going to tackle the mental health question um, for for people. And, and that's a good question. The question for all, all uh, family here is our advisors checking in with students regarding mental health and satisfaction during COVID and, and also in light of the student, two, two student deaths. And, you know, that, that's a good way. We, we are all part of the puzzle of this. And, and yes, so academic advisors are part of this. Um, and, and, and that's one thing I like about SU. Um, our faculty are really our front line. They're the ones that see the students either physically in the classroom or online. They're often our first people to say, I think there's something going on there. Obviously for students in residence halls, there's that piece too. Um, we are just going through what we call mid-semester progress reports. And we have a system that faculty can use to check in with students. It's called Orange Success. If a student is missing a lot of class or they are missing assignments, the professor can flag them and say, hey, what's going on? And our academic advisors get a copy of that. So we kind of have a threshold in our office. You know, if a student misses one class, we don't worry. But when you, when you hit that second or third class, that is when we do check in. So Brad, Rich, Allison, Kristen, Tess, they're checking in students and what, what's going on. Um, we also have a very active, what we call Dean of Students Office and they have case managers. They are really the people that are putting the puzzle pieces together. So if we're hearing from a faculty member that student isn't themselves or missed class 
our advisors will go and see what, what's happening on this activity. Oh, they're missing other classes too. Okay. So then what we will do is we will go to the Dean of Students office and say, is this student on your radar? Because we're getting, getting flags that this student is attending. And they'll say no. And then they will go to the resident's life and talk to the advisor or say, what's, what's happening? Is the student, are you seeing them in the hallway? Are they coming out of their room? Are we, we will, and they'll go see them. So it's kind of putting all the puzzles together. So the answer is yes, advisors fit into this. Um, I know at Flint, where the last student passing was, um, Resla, or I should say the counseling center is right set up right there for students. Um, and, and, and it's really interesting. Um, Suzanne and I have been in higher ed and Brad a long time, Rich, and people, students handle grief differently. Um, some are very emotional. Some want to keep working. Um, that's their way of dealing. Um, and, you know, it's kind of putting pieces of puzzles together and seeing patterns. And, um, and we are part of that. Um, as far as asking every student, um, we have 2000. We don't reach out to every student. We look for clues. Um, but we're often a good, we're often the first people to start to see problems. So I would say, yes, we're, we're quite in tune with that, especially with this. And, and I think we're all getting exhausted. I mean, there's mask exhaustion. Um, there's the distance exhaustion. There's Zoom exhaustion. Here we are on this again. Um, and I just think we have to keep kind of, I always tell students, let's look down the road, not at our feet. We have to look at the end result. Things are gonna get better and we just have to keep looking forward. Um, so that's a long answer, but we are part of the puzzle. I was just gonna add too, if you have a son or daughter that you're concerned about, feel free to reach out to us too, because you're probably texting or calling with them every day. Um, it's a little bit different when we, Karen and I have talked, like when we went to college, we, we called our parents once a week, because we- Like you, you probably, parents probably were the same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, um, we, we want to hear from you. And, and I, I do hear from parents. Parents will call me and, and I don't mind it when parents call me. So don't worry about that. I'm, I'm a parent as well. And, and I, I want to hear from you. So don't, if, if you concerned, call us, if, if I can't help you, I will get you in touch with the, the um, Dean of Students or um, somebody over at the Barn Center, or if it's, you know, we're kind of the first contact, I would like to say. So, so if students have questions and not sure where to go, send them to us and we're, we'll help them research it on the, you know, even if I don't know, I'm gonna research it for them on, you know, SU's website, get them a name um, and, and help them along the way. So feel free to reach out to us as well. Mm -hmm. It's a tough time. I mean, we've been in higher a long time and I, I can't think of, I said the last semester I kind of thought, was like this was um, fall of 2001 after 9-11. Then we had the anthrax and then the DC sniper. I mean, it was just this kind of chaos and a lot of uncertainty. And I mean, this is almost worse because of the pandemic. So, um, you know, we're all kind of living it and all pretty sensitive. And I, and I think faculty are, are being sensitive. I know new houses, um, we try to, new house tries to be a much more family place um, and make, make this a place we want students to get. And that, that's one thing I mentioned too, or I should mention, um, one way you can help us is really encourage your um, students to get out of their rooms, out of their apartments. I know it's not, you know, you have to put a mask on. We're all masked every time we're in the building, the whole time on campus. Um, the new house masks we have are pretty comfortable though, I will say. Um, but it's really important just to be around humans. Um, you know, our concern is when we're starting to see students stay in their room and zoom into classes when they actually could be going physically. Um, and sometimes it takes effort. You know, we all know that to get up and shower and do that. But I, I, I was working with a student a couple of weeks ago and I met her for lunch. We sat outside and she was saying to me, um, I said, does it feel good to get showered and put makeup on and get dressed? She said, I, it actually does. And she emailed me a couple of weeks later and said, you know, she has been trying to do more of that because when you do that, it makes you feel better about yourself to, to not be living in sweatpants like a lot of us did for the spring. Um, but that's one way, just encourage them to get out and walk around. Um, there was a question um, about uh, campus work um, and you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of the, we've had to shut down a lot of, um, 
campus catering, we are catering events, we are feeding people. And a lot of students are hired and work for food services. There's a whole office of student employment mm -hmm. And, um, and her first name is escaping me, but her last name is Brisani. She's awesome. She loves students. She's really into like helping them learn through student. But if you want to shoot us an email, we can get the, um, your son or daughter in touch with the employment office. Um, a lot of offices are actually trying to do remote work, um, give, give jobs for students that they can do remotely. Um, so there are some opportunities, but you're absolutely right. Um, we've lost huge chunks um, with catering not working and sports and things like that not taking place, or, or I should say um, things not happening in the dome. Um, so that's been tough, but we do have an employment office that could be of help. Um, uh, and one more question about getting involved in the Sports Media Center, very easy. They can email Olivia Stomsky. She is the director of it. She's a professor that has a dual appointment. She teaches in both television, radio, film, and broadcast and digital journalism. They have an office, it's actually right around from the advising office on the third floor of New House 3. Her assistant is my Linda. You can even just stick his head in and say, hi, I wanna get involved. Um, as far as signing into the sports or getting into the sports emphasis, all it is the students commit to taking a certain number of electives in the sports area and also attending a certain number of events. It's a pretty low commitment to get involved with the sports center. Uh, easy to do. All you need to do is say, yep, I'm interested to Olivia or my Linda. So, other questions. Um, can somebody get Olivia's information in the chat? I think that would be, someone can look her up, maybe Brad, Rich. We'll put Olivia Stomsky. Um, one thing I might want to show, or I should say, or just share is, um, we just did an update of the Newhouse webpage. And if you've never been on it, um, we have an events page. And again, a lot of things are virtual. Um, we have some things coming up um, next week. We're doing an election series. Um, we're encouraging students to do this next Tuesday. Um, we're doing a covering elections or covering politics with Joel Kaplan. Then we're doing a night before, and then we're doing a post-election. So the second and fourth. Um, but if you go to the Newhouse um, webpage, newhouseschool.sfire.edu, um, go to events and everything is right there. Um, and like I said, that is one positive of Zoom is um, everybody can really participate a lot more. Oh, thank you. There's Olivia Stonsky's information. Thanks, Brad. Um, other thing is our advising office has its link there too. Um, and I was gonna say our faculty, um, you can explore faculty on our website and each faculty member has a bio. So if you're interested about Olivia Stomsky, um, spend a little time. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of time, but I was on our website after it had been redone a couple days ago and um, there's really some neat stuff going on. So um, I would say, take a look at the Newhouse website. Even though they're kind of old fashioned these days. Um, follow us on Twitter. Um, Snapchat as well. So any other questions? If you leave with nothing, um, what we really just want to reiterate is that we are here. Um, I think all of us, we, we hire people who love students and love advising. In fact, I'm saying, uh, I'm going to say Aaron, who's joining us on Monday, he's actually taking a pay cut to come with us because he wants to work with students. He's not working in his current position at, New, at SU with students enough. So um, this is an office that likes, loves students. We are here to help. The one thing that kills us when someone says, I never heard or I never knew. Um, so just encourage them to come get to know us. Um, our job is to help them. So if people don't have any other questions, um, we will wish you all a good weekend and stay safe, stay well. We look forward to seeing you and meeting you in person. Suzanne, any last comments? No, have a great weekend and, and also encourage your students to come in the building. Um, we, kind, we kind of miss seeing them, so. Yeah, please, please have them come. We're around. Um, one last question there. If students are undecided, how do you help them? Lots of ways. Let me tackle this one. If people need to sign off, that's fine. I'm going to just stick around and answer this one. Um, Carmen, we are doing a series of, we're doing major exploration days right now. We have a couple more departments who are presenting and we have recorded sessions. 
So this is one thing we're doing. Um, we normally do these in person, but we can't get 50 students in a room. Um, but what we're doing is students are attending these. Um, they're in the evenings, during the day. They've been sent the schedule. The Career Center organized them. Um, I know we've got broadcast MND, and there's one more happening next Friday. Um, I think it's PR. But all of our, I'm sorry, Suzanne? I think it's PR. PR, okay. All of our majors are presenting their program. So this is what you learn in the public relations major. This is the progression through the major. These are the skills you'll get. So we've been doing this for the past three weeks. They're gonna be ending next um, Friday. So that's one way to explore. Second way to explore is our classes, COM 107, which all students are in now. That is what we call, it's a, it's a theory course. We're covering all of the different industries, how they're interrelated, how they started their histories. Um, COM 117 is the second class that all of our students will take. Half are taking it this fall, the rest will take it this spring and we'll be telling them about this in COM 100. But 117 is really, I just call it the light bulb class. It is the class where students really decide that I'm gonna go more production, creative, or I really like to do more writing and this type of thing. Um, so I always tell students who are really undecided, what they wanna do is don't make any decisions till they take COM 117. So Carmen, if your son or daughter is not in COM 117 yet, I'm gonna have them take that class in the spring. The other thing to do, um, is to um, get involved in campus activities. That's a great way to try things out. So that combination of some classes, learning about majors, trying some things out in um, campus activities, that's how you explore. Um, I'm gonna say that the most important thing to remember is jobs are skills, they're not majors. So you wanna think about majors as what's gonna teach me the skills that I wanna learn because we have broadcast majors going into magazine, we have television, radio, film people going into news. Um, it's skill sets, that's what they need. Um, so there's a lot of different ways. And the major presentations that are missing, our Career Center is gonna be sending links to all of our freshmen for all of the different ones. So if they want to see, they're gonna get a list of all the ones with links to watch them. Um, Kelly Barnett, I don't know if we posted Kelly's email address, um, but it's just Kay Barnett. Um, and she would be the person who is handling the career exploration days. I think that might be one T she has. In terms of uh, exploring minors, there's a variety of things. Yes, a student can go through our catalog and look up all of the different minors um, that are online. Um, they can also meet with their academic advisor and, and learn about different minors that are available. Um, I think the best way though to explore minors is students are really taking new classes that they've never taken before in high school, like anthropology or, you know, women's gender studies or religion classes that they may not have taken in high school. By taking classes, they're learning what they like and what they dislike. Um, that's a great way to figure out if you want to do a minor in psychology or if you have a specific interest. Um, like in sports, you may be interested in doing um, the sports minors that are available over at Falk. Or if you really like a language, some students decide that they want to minor in the language that they've, you know, either taken in high school or have started a language like, I don't know, Portuguese here in uh, Syracuse University. So there's a variety of ways that they can investigate that. Um, if they have questions, first start with your academic advisor and they can kind of help you along with that process. Thanks, Suzanne. Any other questions? Yeah, minor dick, you start looking at those, there's some really fun ones out there. Yeah. So. And it's possible, and I think I agree with Suzanne, talk to the advisor, because we you can do multiple minors with planning. You know, sometimes students can't decide. Um, and that's one thing I think that's really um, great about Syracuse, because there's so it's almost too much choice. Um, but there's some really clever things you can do, so. All righty, yes, the session was recorded and I think what we normally, yes, it was. I don't know, sometimes we send a transcript, um, but if you want to email nhadvise, um, and I'm gonna put that down again, nhadvise at syr.edu. 
we can get that to you either recording or a rough transcript. So, okay. Thanks everybody, really appreciate it. Thanks Brad, Rich, Tess, Allison, Kristen, Suzanne, Brian. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. So we're here, please ask and please, we wanna see your sons and daughters. <laughs>